During an active season, the lifetime of a worker bee is five to six weeks. If a honeybee colony doesn't have a fast turnover of new bees, the honeybee colonies start to have problems. Not enough bees to manage all the tasks a honeybee colony has means that the bees will need to compromise. To have a fast turnover of new bees, a honeybee colony must have an active healthy honeybee queen to lay thousands of eggs daily to provide the new generation of bees to keep the colony alive. Therefore, a healthy honeybee queen is extremely important for the survival of a honeybee colony. In this video, we're gonna talk about an invisible threat to the longevity of a honeybee queen. Temperature stress. I'm Dr. Umberto Bon Cristiani and this is Inside the Hype.tv, the show that takes you into the world of bees. If you like bees and would like to know more about them, please consider to subscribe and also hit the bell button so you don't miss a single video. When a honeybee queen starts to fade naturally, the queen bee is replaced in a process called supersedure. This natural process is a smooth transition, where the old queen still doing some work as not intense as in the past while new queen cells are being built by worker bees. And when the new queen emerged, she will replace the old one. Things get harmful when we have a drastic event. When a queen bee abruptly dies or loses its capacity to lay viable eggs completely. It takes a significant amount of time and resources for a honeybee colony to replace a honeybee queen. And depending on the time of the year and the resources available, drastic events like this could be the end of the colony. Beekeepers have been complaining about the longevity of honeybee queens for decades. Apparently, there is something going on that's making queen bees less productive. A new study published in Nature Sustainability compared healthy queens with failed queens. When the researchers looked inside the queen spermatica, there was a sperm viability drop of 11.5% on average in the group of queens considered by beekeepers as failed queens. The big question here is why? It is well known that sperm are very sensitive to temperature stress, especially heat. The same authors demonstrated how Langstroth hives the wood box commonly used today in beekeeping operations can fail to protect the honeybee colony from the environment compared with the protection they found in nature. If you missed this video, please check the link in the description. With that in mind, the authors then suspected that queens exposed to temperature stress might be the cause of the sperm viability drop that they found. Is it possible for sperm inside the spermatica, inside the queen bee, to lose viability when the queen is exposed to temperature stress? If so, for how long the exposure should be to start to cause damage? To test the hypothesis, the authors expose mated queens to different temperatures, from cold 5 Celsius degree, which is 41 Fahrenheit, to very hot 42 Celsius degree, which is at 107 Fahrenheit, for 1 hour, 2 hours, and 4 hours. And then they dissect these queens to measure sperm viability from the sperm collected inside the spermatica. After 1 hour of exposure, no difference was found. However, after 2 hours of exposure, a difference was observed between the control group, exposed to 25 Celsius degree, which is 77 Fahrenheit, and the group exposed to 10 Celsius degree, which is 50 Fahrenheit, indicating that cold temperatures might be causing sperm viability to drop. Also, after 4 hours of exposure, another difference was noted, now between the control group and the group exposed to 42 Celsius degree, which is 107 Fahrenheit indicating that hot temperatures might also be causing sperm viability to drop. Sidebar, 
Something I noticed in this dataset that deserve mention here. I'm not totally convinced about the cold temperature effect looking deeply in this data. It is intriguing to me that the difference observed between the 25 Celsius degree and the 10 Celsius degree didn't happen in even colder temperature, like the group exposed to 5 Celsius degree. If there is a drop in sperm viability in a group exposed to 10 Celsius degree, I would expect an even more drastic drop in viability in the group exposed to a colder temperature, which didn't happen here. Also, why the effect observed in the group exposed to 10 Celsius degree for 2 hours didn't repeat itself in the group exposed to the same temperature for 4 hours? This part of the data set it's not making much sense to me. Please let me know your thoughts in the description below. I might be missing something here. End of sidebar. The authors then used the data to fit a mathematical model. And the model suggests that 15.2 to 38.2 Celsius degree or 59.4 and 108 Fahrenheit for 2 to 4 hours is considered a safe zone with minimal loss of sperm viability. When the exposure gets out of this safe zone, things start to be detrimental. So, temperature stress can indeed cause problems, but you might be asking yourself, is it realistic to think a queen bee would be exposed to this extreme temperature for that long? What situations this could be happening in real life? The beekeeping industry demands mass production of queens that needs to be shipped by mail. What happens to these queens traveling in little box with just a couple of, of assistant worker bees is unpredictable. This could be indeed a situation in real life where queen bees could be exposed to extreme temperatures. The authors recorded the temperature of several of these shipments and the results are alarming. Looking at this graph, it become clear that queens shipped by mail can be exposed to very extreme conditions. Another situation that is not so obvious to realize is that drones, the honeybee male, could also be affected. There is no reason to think that drones would be immune to temperature stress. Perhaps drones exposed to temperature stress lose sperm viability but still able to mate with queens. And in this case, the new queen that was never exposed to temperature stress might end up with problems. Temperature stress can be a big problem and it is an important topic that need much more research on. Perhaps research to develop a better hive materials to protect bees in extreme temperatures, or research on new ways to transport live queen bees in a mail that can guarantee protection. I'm very excited to see what the future will bring to the beekeeping world. If you want to see the other two videos I made about this subject, click the thumbnails at the screen now. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please click the logo at the screen right now so you become part of the family. As always, a special thanks to my patrons for the support. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about peace. See you guys next week.